Baal Shem Tov. Somebody came to the Baal Shem Tov one time, and he said, Rebbe, I don't know what's going on with me. I come to Yeshurim, I learn everything. Prayer, for me, became a waste of time. Rebbe says, why? He says, I don't know, I come to Shul, I look at the Sidul, I'm praying, but the whole time I'm thinking about Mamash. I don't even want to, Rebbe, I'm embarrassed to tell you what I think about. I'm embarrassed to tell you what I think about. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I take the Sidul, I take it. I'm thinking, as soon as I, put the, I open the Sidul, I'm thinking about women half naked. I'm thinking about casino. I'm thinking about the worst things in the world, Rebbe, when I'm speaking to God. The Baal Shem Tov says, oh, okay, yeah, I know what's going on. He says, it's your Sidu. He says, what Sidu? What? What's wrong with Sidu? He says, you see, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you're not allowed to look at the face of a Rasha. You're not allowed to look at the face of a wicked person. Why? Because even looking at him will affect your Neshama. Your sidu, you probably lend it to somebody, or you left it somewhere, and you didn't use it, right? Because yeah, of course, I went away, I forgot my sidu, it was gone. Because yeah, so what happened? Somebody picked up your sidu and used it, and that somebody was a rasha. So now every time you open your sidu, your neshama is looking at him. It's not reading the words of Hashem. It's looking at this person's face, and it's affecting you. That's why you're thinking what he thought. When he was praying to Hashem, instead of thinking about Hashem, he was thinking about girls, he was thinking about guys, he was thinking about everything and anything except Hashem. So now when you look at your Sidu, you're thinking like him. Change your Sidu, everything's going to work out. So much so, Rabotai Karim, that when a person prays, if he actually starts realizing that his mind is elsewhere, the Baal Shem Tov says, change your Sidu. Because maybe somebody used it. That's why I advise to everybody... If you're going to take Torah seriously, buy yourself a Sidu. Don't use the one in Shul. Buy yourself a Sidu. Even though the Shul is very accommodating, very nice, very gracious, you're all grown-ups, get 20 bucks in your pocket and buy yourself a Sidu. You can leave it in the Shul if you want. If if you live in a Eruv. But you should have a Sidu for day to day. Have yourself a Sidu. Why? Because the reality is that you want to have something, number one, that you can take with you, regardless of where you are, that you could get used to, regardless of where you are. But most importantly, you want to have something that's yours and no one else can hurt in any way, even spiritually. Even if this is beyond the scope of this generation altogether, I still recommend for people to buy their Sidu. If the Baal Shem Tov from 400 years ago told his, uh, his Talmud to change his Sidu, and that's how you're going to change your Tefillah, I'll take the Baal Shem Tov at, at its face value. If you have a complaint, go to, before you go to sleep tonight, you say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, please make a meeting between me and the Baal Shem Tov while I'm dreaming, and maybe you can have a meeting with the Baal Shem Tov. I'll explain to you uh, what, why he said it. But, according to the Baal Shem Tov, you should have your own Sidu. Why? Because sometimes somebody that's not so nice looked at that Sidu. Now that somebody that's not so nice doesn't necessarily need to be a murderer. It could simply be one of those people that I used to see at the shul that drove on Shabbat. Doesn't need to be a murderer or some type of pedophile or some type of psychopath. No! It could simply be somebody that Hashem decides, according to His laws, that's a rasha. What's a rasha? Somebody drives on Shabbat. Somebody drives on Shabbat. Hashem says, the idol worshiper. What's an idol worshiper? Disgusting. What's disgusting? Rasha. Wicked. Yes. There are many 